things. Uh, as, as you leave, we're going. To, you'll see uh, that we have uh, mini bunk cakes that uh, Ashley uh, made for for all the moms and mother figures. And there, uh, so if you want to, as you leave, to to grab one of those. If you're a mom, a grandma. Or uh, if, you, if you're a woman and you shaped and molded anyone uh, in your life, those are those are for you to take as you leave. Uh, and then also uh, at the end, we'll kind of do uh, we'll I'll, I'll have some fun little things for us to do. And three of three of the women will be taking home these hanging baskets in front. And uh, and. I'll, I'll decide how we're going to do that as we uh, as we go through. I have something written down here, but maybe that will change, right? Uh, and then uh, the other announcements is uh, today after worship we'll also be having a, a fellowship time. Uh, and so, uh, thank you to, to Kathy. Kathy kind of organizes the second uh, Tuesday, and then we're also we're looking for someone to organize the fourth or not second Tuesday, second Sunday. Uh, we're looking for someone to organize the fourth Sunday, and so if you might be uh, wanting to do that, uh, uh, let us let us know, and we'll we'll put you down. Uh, and then also the the community food bank. Uh, yes, we we continue to have new people come and uh, and be blessed by the by the food bank every week. It's about ten to, to fifteen people. Uh, every week, and and so I think this past uh, yesterday we had two new people that that heard it, whether they they see it on on Facebook or one of their friends shares it with them, or they drive by the the church sign and they see it, and uh, just want to continue to put that out there for you if you want to to come and, and volunteer and to be a part of that. Uh, so many of you uh, have blessed uh, people in our in our community, and it's just an amazing thing. Uh, to be there and to, to sit down. My favorite thing is talking with the people. Uh, Alfred will say I probably spend most of my time just talking with people. And uh, it's just an amazing thing. So if you want to do that, I want just encourage you to do that. Uh, let's continue by, uh, by sharing any birthdays or anniversaries with the community in the coming week. Are there any coming up? So, Kathy. John and I will be celebrating 30 years tomorrow. Awesome, congratulations. Are there any other birthdays or anniversaries? We have Joe and Jackson Bluebaugh, their birthday is on the 11th, is what I have. Are there any announcements that people would want to share with the community? I have, uh, I have. You'll see in the in the on the flyers uh, out there that uh, Eldon and Doris Roberson will be celebrating their 70, 70th anniversary on on June twelfth, and they want to invite you to come. They're going to be doing a a vow renewal at two, and then they're going to have a reception following in the fellowship hall. And so they just invite you to come. That's that Sunday, June 12th at two, and it will go until 4 p.m. Will you please join me in prayer? Holy Spirit, come and flood this place today. Fill the, the atmosphere, be the, the air that we breathe as we come together and worship God as a, as a community together. We pray this in your name. Amen. Let's stand and worship by singing the song, Holy Ground.
our announcement, I forgot it and then I saw it. Uh, and so this past Wednesday, we had a, a, a fundraising Wednesday night meal for Miss Bledsoe, for Tina Bledsoe. And I just wanted to, to share that we, we raised $6,578 uh, for Tina. And, uh, and yeah, am amazing, yeah. And then I, I know, like, I, I'm talking with Jeannie, we, I think she said there's like enough for like 200, 200 people, <laughs> but like there's 268 people served, which is pretty, pretty cool. And we had to tell, we ran out of food and uh, we had to tell people that we ran out of food and we just encouraged them to support uh, Tina uh, anyways. And most everybody uh, content just did, even though they didn't get eat dinner, they came and they had a dessert. And so uh, just thank you. Uh, it was a community wide effort for you. And uh, just, just amazing, uh, the generosity uh, that each, each one of you, a lot of you were there and just the community had. And so just uh, thank you on behalf of, of Tina uh, for that. So let's continue to worship by singing, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Amen. Let's continue to worship by singing, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
I want to invite Ashley to come up here to lead you all in the unison prayer. Ashley and crew. <clears throat> o holy God, open unto us light for our darkness, courage for our fear, hope for our despair. O loving God, open unto us wisdom for our confusion, forgiveness for our sins, love for our hate. O God of peace, open unto us peace for our turmoil, joy for our sorrow, strength for our weakness. O generous God, open our hearts to receive all your gifts. Amen. You, you may be seated, and let's continue in a, a time of prayer together. Uh, in this time, I want to invite you to uh, share any joys or any uh, prayer concerns that you might have. Uh, with the community so that we can uh, keep them in our prayers throughout the week. Um, I have one. My mother, um, Mary Haycock, has been on the prayer list for quite a while. Wednesday, she has a valve replacement. So um, appreciate you keeping her in her prayers. Absolutely, we'll keep Mary in our, our prayers and especially on Wednesday. Are there any other prayer requests that people? Angela has one. I'd like to keep my friend Kim Smirchuk in your prayer. I found out a few weeks ago that she has a tumor on her pituitary uh, gland, so they're pursuing uh, what they're going to do at this time. So could you get them to the neurosurgeon and I'll be in love? We'll keep Kim in our prayers, Angela. We'll continue to keep Jim in our prayers, Maureen. Yeah. Uh, Francis has one. Pastor, I was listening this morning when you were talking about Tina Bledsoe's benefit on Wednesday night. There ought to be a prayer of thanksgiving for the amount of money that was raised and for everybody that came out to help support the cause. Absolutely. And then, uh, if there are there any other prayer requests that people would want to share with the community? All right, uh, let's continue to worship by uh, joining together in prayer. Oh God, as as we come together to worship you today, we give thanks for uh, today. We give thanks for uh, the many women who ha have shaped who we have become, whether it's our, our, our mothers or if it's, a, if it's a, another woman who had great influence in our lives, I'm, I'm sure that each of us can, can see and, and visualize all those that have impacted us in a tremendous way. God, we also uh, come and we realize that uh, for some of us, uh, today we, we grieve whether we grieve that we grieve the loss of uh, the moms who have uh, who have passed away, we grieve uh, being unable to uh, be a mom. Uh, maybe we are, are, are grieving as our, our 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 mom. We're not being able to be with our moms on today. For some of us, our our, our moms are uh, are are in, in hospitals, for some they're in other states. And, and God, I just ask for your presence to surround everyone today, to give them peace if they need peace, to, to comfort them, uh, to, to give them whatever they need in this exact moment. And we know that you can provide that. 
God, today as we, we gather together, uh, we, we celebrate uh, Kathy and John Kinch uh, celebrating uh, 30 years of marriage tomorrow. We, we come and, and we celebrate and, and offer our thanksgiving for the, the tremendous uh, amount of work that was done on Wednesday and, and the generosity of this community to support Tina. God, we, we ask that you surround uh, Mary Heacock and the, and the doctors who are, uh, will be providing her care on, on Wednesday. Uh, be with, with Andy as she sits and, and waits uh, as her mom is having this valve replacement. God, we, we pray for Angela's friend Kim that you lead and guide the, the medical team who will be uh, providing her care so that uh, they can, can do what is best for, for her body. God, we, we want to pause in this moment to offer up the, our own prayers that, are, that were, are on our hearts, but they uh, were not voiced as a community. So we pause in this moment to lift up those meditations to you now. God, we know you are always ready to listen to us. We know that you are, are always as near as our breath. And as we, we, we pray the prayer that you taught the disciples to pray, and as we dive deeper into to that today, may it take up a profound residence in our hearts, that when we pray it, they are not just words spoken, but they are our words done and words practiced. So God, right now in this moment, we pray the words that Jesus taught his disciples to pray and teaches us to pray by praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand for the reading of scripture. Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verses 1 through 4. Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. Jesus told them, when you pray, say, Father, uphold the holiness of your name. Bring in your kingdom. Give us the bread we need for today. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who has wronged us. And don't lead us into temptation. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of God's word. Amen. You may be seated. And all the, the kiddos can go with uh, Kimberlyn to Sunday school. And uh, as, as they go... Uh, each family is going to be getting a, a, a book from a, a, a pastor I learned a great deal of information about, about the, the Lord's Prayer and about what it means and explaining it to them in, uh, in words that they can re relate to. And so, uh, so I encourage you to read that with, with your kids when you, when you go home. And uh, it will be pretty, uh, pretty awesome learning experience, I think, for both you and, and them. Uh, and so... As we dive into the Lord's Prayer, how many people do you think, if you had to guess, how many people do you think probably say the Lord's Prayer on any given weekend? So there, there's roughly about 2 billion Christians. And so a Pew Research study said about 80% of people pray and so just like a, a conservative estimate would probably be one billion people, about half, half of Christians probably say this every single weekend. How many people here pray it every day? Do you try to pray it every day? Yeah, I see a couple. 
I, I, I've, I've tried to do that every day this week. Normally, I, I say prayers, and it, my, my prayers can be repetitive. Can your prayers be repetitive? Like, I, I tend to, like, probably pray for the same things. Uh, I tend to pray for, like, things that are going on in my world and not uh, the whole world or in the other world. I get, I'm getting better, better at that, but they tend to be pretty repetitive about the same things uh, over and over again. And so that's why I think it's important to unpack the, the Lord's Prayer. And what is Jesus actually teaching us to pray? Is he teaching us to pray like these specific words, or is he teaching us kind of like a pattern of prayer? The early Christian communities, when they would pray the, the Lord's Prayer, uh, they would pray it three times a day. And so what I, what I gather from that is they're pray, praying it three times a day, like it's kind of like that constant reminder of whether they set, they didn't have alarms like we have alarms, like say your cell phone goes off at eight, noon, and five, and I'm going to pray the Lord's Prayer every then. I wondered the timing of when they prayed it, but the guess is, is that they prayed it about three times. And so we pray it, we say it, how many of us have it memorized? Yeah, pretty much everybody has, has it memorized. I have this great fear of forgetting the words. Like uh, when I'm in front of you all, or especially like when I'm at like a, a graveside or a funeral and I'm, I'm leading it, that's like one of my biggest fears is like forgetting a word in the Lord's Prayer as I lead people. And so every, uh, pretty much a lot, everybody in this room said they have it memorized. But I would, I would wonder, as my hope is that as we go through it, we learn something. We might have a, a greater uh, understanding of the profound meaning that Jesus is teaching his disciples to pray. And so we heard Ashley read from the Gospel of Luke. And the Gospel of Luke, I'm going to read it again, uh, says, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. And so there, there's, there's an interesting part here is that when he, Jesus was praying in a certain place, when he finished, one of his disciples said, so people saw him praying like this. They saw him in this pattern of prayer. And so they asked him to teach them. So they said, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. Jesus told them, when you pray, say, Father, uphold the holiness of your name. Bring in your kingdom. Give us the bread we need for today. Forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone who has wronged us and don't lead us into temptation. And then in the Gospel of Matthew, uh, Matthew uh, says, Jesus, it says, pray like this. And so not the, the long intro where the disciples ask Jesus how he, uh, to teach him, but Jesus just said, pray like this. Our Father who is in heaven, uphold the holiness of your name. Bring in your kingdom so that your will is done on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us the bread we need for today. Forgive us the ways we have wronged you, just as we also forgive those who have wronged us. And don't lead us into temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. And so just here, the, the, the fact that, that Matthew and Luke both talk about Jesus praying the Lord's Prayer in different settings, so it's not in the same setting, suggests that Jesus taught this prayer often and frequently to the people who were following him. And so most, uh, most biblical scholars will say, because in, in Matthew it falls right in the sermon, middle of the Sermon on the Mount. So the Sermon on the Mount is Matthew 5 through 7. The whole Sermon on the Mount was something that Jesus taught repeatedly to the people who were following him. And so Jesus uh, didn't mean for the, the Lord's Prayer to be something that we just recite on Sundays and then we forget about it as we're living life. He didn't want it to be framed on a wall and forget the meaning. And so Jesus was teaching God's people through his disciples how to pray. And so that's why we pray this every week in worship. And so it's a pattern that Jesus did frequently. And so when we get together and gather as a community, it's something that we should do frequently as well. It's a rhythm of life. And so as we look at the Lord's Prayer, like it, it covers a wide range of topics, right? Like there's just not one topic uh, that is continued on there. It goes from the, the, the lofty uh, expectations of, of Jesus bringing the kingdom here on earth to like the everyday needs that each of us have. The, where, when it says, give us the bread we need 
for today, right? And so it's, it's a model of prayer that we can weave into our lives and to make our prayers not seem so repetitive. And so if there's any subjects or wishes or, or prayers that you tend to avoid in prayer, the Lord's Prayer gives you an invitation to pray about those things directly. And so as we begin today, we're going to look at, at the first three lines. And so does anybody want to volunteer to say the first three lines? So our Father, right, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And so we're going to talk about what is Jesus mean when he says our father? Because he doesn't say my father, right? He says our father. And so when you look at the Lord's prayer, the first word our is this oneness, that you, this unity that we have with one another. There's no me or, or my's or I's in the Lord's prayer. It's all ours and thy's. And so that's the, the, the community nature. That's Jesus saying we, God is all of our fathers. He's not just my father, he's our father. And so the use of plural pronouns is important in the Lord's prayer. Our father, our daily bread. And so while we pray for specific and personal concerns, beginning it with that word, the, those two words, our father, he rem, Jesus is reminding us that beyond all of our, our, our differences that we have, we are all part of the same family. We don't make this, this faith journey alone, but in the company of one another, in the company of community, in the company of the saints that have gone before us, we make this journey together, are. And so remember in the, in the Gospel of John, uh, just hours before Jesus would be hung on a cross, Jesus prayed this for his followers to be one. And so listen to this from the Gospel of John. Holy Father, Watch over them in your name, that they will be one just as, as we are one. I pray that they will be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. And so in a, in a world that, that tends to focus like on what our differences are, right? Our, our world tends to focus on, I'm different from you because of this. And don't get me wrong, like being unique is, is, is important because God created us each uniquely. But the, the world tends to focus on what divides us. And here it is, it is, and Jesus is saying, let's focus on what makes us one. Our Father. And so the, the, the words uh, for God in the Old Testament, uh, the words for God uh, were, were kind of meant to be the, these big words. They weren't specific, like they were El Shaddai, Elohim, Yahweh. But God doesn't use, or Jesus doesn't use those ways to describe his relationship with God in the Lord's Prayer. He uses Abba. And that's a significant difference because Abba uh, means that it's something that's familiar or, or a term for something that's important or an intimate relationship. And so I don't know about you, when I call my mother or my father, I don't say, hey, mother. Hey, Father, right? That's kind of like when we use the, the words uh, uh, for God, like El Shaddai, Elohim, and Yahweh, it's like Father and Mother. But when I call my mom and dad, I say, Hey, Mom. Like that mom and dad, it, it signals kind of like that intimate relationship, right? More intimate than mother and father, at least in my eyes, it, it does. And so God, uh, Jesus is saying that this is an intimate relationship. The Abba, when he uses the word Abba, this is an intimate relationship. Something that, uh, someone that knows him, him very well. And so in prayer, and, and so Jesus and Paul often use this Aramaic word, and it's, and it's just unique. And, and Abba was a respectful but intimate way to address one's father. And so let's move on to, to who are art in heaven. And so this phrase, if we look at the Greek word of this phrase, I think it, it, it's eye-opening for me, and it's spelled O-U-R-A-N-O, -O so, so Oranos. And so uh, we typically think of heaven as like an unspecified location, usually like some kind of far away place, kind of like almost like a to the like Star Wars degree, right? Like on a galaxy far, far away, right? Like we tend to think of heaven in that, in that way. But 
Oranos also means air and atmosphere. Air and atmosphere. And so as you begin to to think about what heaven is or or where heaven is, I just want to give you a a couple couple promptings. And so uh, the ancient belief or the biblical belief, like when they were praying this prayer was, was, was heaven is was was up there and so that's like in, in church like or when we're, we're praying does that, anybody ever say we lift up our prayers like does has anybody said that before like just that that kind of fits into here like like heaven is, is up 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 there uh god was, was over everything that's what this statement is kind of saying who art in heaven god was over everything it's a statement about how big god is how glorious god is uh, uh you rule all over creation it's a statement to the awesomeness of god uh, and, and so that word that goes with that is transcendence. And so transcendence means it's beyond anything we can perceive, visualize, or imagine. We can uh, imagine what, what heaven is like. I have books in my office, so I'm, uh, I help kind of help imagine what heaven is. And we don't really talk, imagine heaven enough. But we, this word transcendence is it's even beyond anything we can imagine. And so we, the, the psalmists speak to this over and over. And one psalm, it's Psalm 119, says, heaven is declaring God's glory. The sky is proclaiming his handiwork. One day gushes the news to the next, and one night informs another what needs to be known. Of course, there's no speech, no words. Their voices can't be heard, but their sound extends throughout the world. Their words reach to the ends of the earth transcendent, something beyond we can perceive, something beyond we can visualize, something beyond what we can imagine. But then Jesus is also saying, who art in heaven, it also has this word eminence. So it's eminent and transcendent. And so what does eminence mean? Eminence means it's a state of being inherent or exclusively existing within something. So, if it, so we, all, we hear this in, in Genesis, the Lord God formed human from the top soil of the fertile land and blew life's breaths into his nostrils. The human came to life. So God is both transcendent beyond anything we can imagine, but also in, as eminent as the air that we breathe. And so God's, God's breath, it's, it's a Hebrew word called ruach. And it's all throughout the Bible. And it's about, it goes back to this, 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 this understanding as the, that God is as close to us as the air we breathe. Think about that for a second as you breathe. Like God is as close to you as the air you be, breathe. And then there's hallowed, hallowed be thy name. And first of all, I had to, I had to look up like what, what does to hollow something mean, right? Like, I don't, does anybody else use that word? I don't use that word. So what does hallowed be thy name mean? What does hollow mean? And so to hollow something is to make it, it holy or to, to revere it. And so it's the first request, right? And, and the, the Lord's prayer is to hollow, hallowed be thy name. It's a, to make your name great, God. To make your name glorious. You notice it's not saying, Jesus could have easily, like, make, make my name glorious. Make, like, Jesus, I want to be glorified. So it's not to make his name glorified. So when we pray this prayer, it's not about us and, and to us receiving all the glory. It's for God receiving the glory, to glorify God's name. And so oftentimes, and if you watch a, 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 a sporting event, you'll hear a lot of times athletes will say, like, right afterwards, they come up to him, and they interview him and say, to God be the glory. Like that fits right in this, to not to take the, the, the credit yourself, but to give God the glory in everything that you do. And so it, it has the, the, it's clothed in the, the, the thy in cro- contrast to, to me or my. There's no me or my's in the prayers, there's only thy's. And so part of it is also upholding the holiness of God's name, right? And so that's one of, that's, I think that's the, the third, third commandment 
is that we're not supposed to use God's name in vain. And so it's going back to uh, the Old Testament. Jesus is going back to the Old Testament. And in Exodus uh, 27, to not use God's name in vain. And as I was thinking about this, I remember, like, how, how would you feel if every time someone was mad or upset, they cried out your name? <laughs> right? Like... Like, uh, I, it was sometime this week, I can't remember which somebody did that, and uh, was, did something, or, oh, God. Like, how would you feel if someone said, oh, Jeannie, oh, Lou, oh, Dan, oh, Gina, oh, Jan. What, how would you feel if every time someone got upset or mad, they cried out your name, right? And so that's what it's speaking to. How would be thy name whole, be it, to, to make it holy and to revere it? And so don't use it in vain. Uh, don't drag God's name through the mud, someone said to me one time. Uh, and, don't, and don't misuse it. And so that's how we, we keep it holy and, and, and revere it. And so as we, as we go through this, like I, I hope you, you learn something. I hope you... Uh, uh, Pray this prayer every day. If you aren't praying it every day, maybe you, you pray it when we, we, we wake up. If we pray it when we wake up as a community, you'll, you will be focused on the others, right? You'll be focused on the R and, and the thy and, and not focused on the me's and the my's. And that's the, the hope of, of, the, of this prayer. Like as you continue to, to say it and to say it every day is that the, the focus begins, your focus begins to be Jesus's focus. Your will tends to become more like Jesus's will. And, and so next week we'll, we'll dive into the, the next couple uh, uh, verses in, in, in this, the next couple sentences in this. And we're kind of going to do it the, 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 the same way. We're going to take a, a couple, couple phrases and un, unpack it. Uh, if you have a, a couple phrases in the Lord's Prayer that you're saying, you know, when, when I say the Lord's Prayer, I've always wondered about this. What, the, what, the, what does this mean? Let me know. I, I'll include it. I'd love to, to dive into it. Uh, because it, I think it's as we understand and uh, unpack it, it we learn how deep and profound it is. And so if you have a, a kid in, in Sunday school, ask them to say the first three lines uh, to you. I, I think they should be able to do that. But my hope is that, that everyone will, will have it memorized. Everyone will, will learn it. If you get the book, I encourage you to read it to them. Uh, and so that there, there's that for the Lord's Prayer. And I believe as we pray this, it will be like God's kingdom will come and be more visualized here on earth, just like it is in heaven. We praise pray with me? God, we, we give you thanks for this, not only this, this model of prayer from Jesus, but the how to, to, to practice it, uh, the, the frequency in, in which we pray it, just the, the pattern of prayer life that he ha has set before us. And as we, as we dive into the Bible and, and read scripture, may we too ask the same questions that the disciples ask. Because we remember in, in the Gospel of Luke, one of the disciples saw Jesus doing this. He said, hey, Jesus, Teach me to pray. God, open our, our ears, open our eyes, open our minds to what you are trying to teach us today. It is in your name we pray. Amen. And so now as we continue to worship, we're going to do the, the offertory in doxology and uh, I just wanted to to share ye yesterday one of one of the one of the many things from the, the food bank uh, about uh, how how you all are, are blessing people through uh, your generosity is uh, one of the one of the the it's, there's so many families with kids uh, that that come come through. And the ability for them to provide 
uh, snacks uh, for their family, for, for meals for their family. Every time I, I, I talk with, with someone that, that comes through, it, 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 uh, I'm just more aware of what is going on uh, in, in people's lives. And for various reasons, people, people need assistance. And it's, it's pretty amazing that uh, people can just drive by and look at the sign and say, oh, wow. This, this, this is here for me, but not only this is here for me, but this is fully stocked for, for me. It has, has eggs in it, it has uh, milk in it, it has meat in it, it has everything that, that we could possibly meet, need in it. And every single person that comes in just gives, gives thanks. Ask Amber or ask Alfred, every single person who comes in just gives thanks for your, your generosity. And uh, I don't think we celebrate that enough. And so uh, I want to celebrate and, and give thanksgiving uh, for, for that. Whether you've showed up and volunteered, whether you've brought, uh, brought something for the, the hunt for hunger, or whether you helped organize anything, or you brought and donated, just, I just wanted to celebrate, uh, celebrate you and the generosity that you share with the community. So I just want to invite Kathy to do the offertory, and then we'll stand and sing the doxology together. All right, before we sing the closing hymn, we have these three baskets. So I was wondering how, how to do this. Do we do it, give it to the oldest mom, the youngest mom, the mom with the most kids? And I, I think Gina would win, maybe win the mom with the most kids, I'm not sure. So let's start right there, mom with the most kids. There you go, yes, Doris. So Doris, cat. Come up here and come up here and grab a. It's all right. You're come up here and grab this, or maybe Angela or Eldon. Oh, you're perfect. You can you can have that. I, I you have seven kids today. Uh, maybe we have the next one. If anybody wants to admit the oldest mom. Thelma. Thelma, one of these will be yours, too. And then how should we do the, the last one? Oh, that's a heavy one. They are very heavy. I mean, we could naturally do the, the newest mom, but I, I don't know about that. Let's do Ashley. All right. Ashley's going to get this last one. Perfect. So let's sing the closing hymn, God Be With You Till We Meet Again, and we're going to be singing verses 1 and 2.
Amen. And as we, as we leave today, uh, I want to encourage you, uh, for all the moms and mother figures, to grab a, a bunt cake. It's shaped in a, it's a, it's a flower bunt cake. And they're just right out here on, on, on the table that uh, Ashley, Ashley made. And so she just wants, she wants to bless you all. So they're just right out there. And uh, as, we, as we remember, I want you to remember as we go, I'll do the candles. <laughs> and to remember, like, as you leave, like, this, this also symbolizes something, that as we, as we leave, uh, God's presence goes with us, God's light goes with us. So as you leave uh, the sanctuary today, may you remember that, that God is as close to each of you as the air you breathe. Amen.